Hello, everyone. Welcome this Saturday night. You're in for a lovely treat of a random river rant. Um, love to have you guys here. If you want to join me in the chat, I'm going to give my little boop boop. If you guys want to let me know if you're on Facebook and you want me to be able to see your name, you can actually just go to chat.restream.io slash Facebook, and then I can actually see what you guys are posting. So I want to share with you what I saw in a group and it just rubbed me just the wrong way. So I decided to do a river rant because why not? I know most of you guys are probably either in bed or you're ready for bed. Um, and I thought this would be, a, a you know, well, I'm inspired. It's going to happen. You know how that is. So let me, here we go. So I want to share with you guys a screenshot I took and I thought it was really important to go over. So here's what the screenshot said. You know what I hate? Having disrespectful employees that undermine your authority and think they know better than you know how to run your business and try to run your business differently than you run right under your nose. Change your rules or make their own. Bash your business culture and way of running, breaking your equipment, etc. Yet has never run a legal, legit business so frustrated with the world and the little sections of decent employees, let alone anyone who has any respect for you or even an ounce of human decency. Ugh. Where are the decent employees that actually want to work, the ones that follow rules, the ones who understand basic math? The work ethic in today's world is unbelievable. Now, the truth is that whenever I see any of these posts, I always cringe a little bit because when you listen to this person, right, we want to say, first of all, what is going on? Are they managing their team? And for better, or for worse, guys, sometimes we want to blame our employees, but ultimately when our employees fail us, it's ultimately our responsibility as the leaders, okay? Okay. And that doesn't feel good necessarily, but it's going to be incredibly important for us to use the lens of what is going on in this. So again, looking at this, you know, this person is yelling into the void, saying how everyone sucks, right? Everyone is disrespectful. Everyone is undermining their authority, et cetera, et cetera. So whenever this happens, my first question is, you know, are these W-2 employees, are they W-2 hourly employees with clear expectation, job descriptions? Do they have an SOP manual? Do they have all the workings, all right? Do they have everything that they need in order to make this person actually succeed? And the majority of the industry, we just don't have them, right? So we have at Savvy Groomer created three different classes in order to help you guys succeed. We have our first class actually it's being taught this quarter in our group mentoring in our Savvy Groomer membership called the Pay Master Class. And in that, we teach you guys how to legally pay your employees W-2 hourly plus bonuses. That's what we are more than happy to teach you guys. We talk about how to create tiers and roles because people need to be able to be promoted and demoted, right? We need to be able to manage our team. And that brings us to, in quarter three, we're going to teach you guys another class that's called manage. In manage, we talk about what kind of leader are you? You know, knowing yourself as a leader is just as important as knowing who's in your team and how they all interact with ourselves. Most of you guys are hiring employees that are just bodies, right? And you're like, well, I want someone who works really, really hard. I'm like, well, define really hard because the majority of the industry at this point wants to make a livable wage grooming about five small dogs a day. And that's getting complicated. Because the majority of us that have been grooming more than 10 years, I've been grooming about 15 now, we were expected to do eight dogs in eight hours, maybe even two, three bath dogs on top of that. That's not what's happening anymore. It's not that they don't want to work anymore. 
it's as an industry, what happened, guys, is that the majority of us are burnt out, broken, broken, and we have nothing to show for it. So guess what? They're not going to want to follow in our footsteps. It's not that they don't want to work. It's just they don't want to repeat what we did. This is fair. Listen, I wish I could go back 15 years and say to me, hey, hey, you don't need to be grooming eight to 10 dogs a day. You can do five and be perfectly happy and make plenty of money, right? That's the truth, what's going on right now. So when we are building our team, we need to know who we are. And the reason we need to know who we are is simply put, if you don't know what kind of person that you are, how are you supposed to manage your team? So whenever someone is really worried about respect, it's because generally we're lacking boundaries um, or we have some sort of attachment issue, codependency, or we're just not able to communicate effectively what we're expecting of other people, right? Because the people that are yelling into the void, like, oh, no one respects me. Okay, well, why do you feel that way? Right? Why do you feel that way? When we feel like the need to defend ourselves, that's not from a healthy place generally, for better, for worse. So what we can do there, so in this person, I would first ask, are they W-2 legal employees? What is your expectation of them? Is there an option for them in different seasons of their life? You know, maybe they're slightly injured. Maybe they're pregnant. Maybe they're just having a real shit time. Sometimes our lives are not perfect and we need to go slower. You know, maybe you have a groomer who used to be able to consistently do eight dogs in eight hours, but is having a hard time in their personal life. And now they can consistently do five to six. What is their expectation? And again, this is why in the pay masterclass, we teach you guys how to pay hourly plus production. And we do that in the form of the point system. A very simple way of explaining this is that if I expect them to do shih tzus, let's say a two point shih tzu, which is like a five strip, or if you guys don't do five strips, it's like a half inch on the body, no styling round teddy bear face, right? If I expect my groomer to do, let's say between five and six of those a day, that would make them If they're bathing and blow drying their own dogs, I make them eat 10 to 12 point dog. Okay. That's very clear to someone. I expect you to do, to groom 10 to 12 points a day. I will be booking you 10 to 12 points a day. Right. And again, if they're not following the rules, my question is always, why are they not following the rules? Now in manage, we go really deep into it. My first question is, are you clear? Are you using all four forms to teach them? Are you making sure, you know, and that is, if you guys don't know the four learning styles, it is kinesthetic, which most groomers are, we learn by doing. Then we have reading and writing. Most groomers don't have that, but it's still really good to have, right? And there's lots of ways to find out if people are reading, writing, learning. You can ask them. You know, do they like to learn to cook by cooking, by reading a recipe and memorizing it, you know, by having someone read off a recipe, right, which is audio, you know, or do they want to watch someone do it? Most groomers learn by physically watching them to do it and also auditory while they're physically doing it. Most of them are not reading, writing. That said, we don't often break down what we expect them to do, right? We're not sitting there. We say, okay, you're going to wash this dog. Okay, well, if I go into five different grooming salons, everyone has a different opinion about what a wash dog is. Am I washing the dog three times? Am I washing the dog twice? Um, am I? How, what shampoo do I use? How do I decide what shampoo to use, right? What is the actual process of that? The majority of us don't teach our employees what the process is. We just say, okay, you're going to wash and dry that dog. Okay. Well, in, is there a specific order? What am I supposed to be doing with this dog? How do I know if this dog is at the level and the skill that we want them to do? Um, and then we go to, let's say you say, yes, I've done all these things. So, okay. When you hired them, what personalities were you hiring for? What traits were you hiring for? 
So I love me Myers-Briggs and I love the disc, right? I want to know, are they a thinking type or a feeling type? Are they an introvert or an extrovert, right? Are, you know, how do they think and feel and do things? Because if I have, if I'm an introvert and I don't like talking to people and I hire someone who's an extrovert, right? And my goal is for them to be quiet, be in the back and just groom. And I hire an extrovert. They're going to just talk all day. They're going to seek out human connection all day, right? Or if I am a feeling type, right? And I hire a bunch of thinking types and I want them to feel something that they just don't feel. Because again, a thinking type needs a thought to create a feeling where a feeling type just feels things. Often there's a huge disconnect. So it's not just nobody wants to work. The truth is the industry is a little broken, okay? We're not paying a livable wage or a consistent livable wage. The majority of our industry is misclassified because, you know, you have, if you're paying commission, for the most part, you have to be paying commission plus overtime. And most of us aren't, never, you know, you can't legally pay someone's salary doing manual labor. You know, they have to be W-2, right? Rent on average in most places is $2,000 a month. And most people have to make three to four times minimum, you know, the minimum amount for the rent. So they have to make between six and $8,000, right? The industry right now is a little broken, you know, and not just that when you finally do get these good people, right? Most people in this industry are not creating roles and tiers where people can get promoted or demoted based upon their productivity, based on how they're doing, based on their skill set. We just kind of like, all right, you're a bather and you're going to be a bather till I have enough time to train you to be groomed. A groomer. And then we have a groomer, right? Okay. Well, are there different tiers and levels to that groomer, right? How do I get promoted? Am I just grooming five dogs a day till I die? Is that just kind of my life? Unfortunately, as an industry, we have to change. And I know it's easier said than done, right? I get that. You know, I'm passionate enough that here I am at 940 at night on a Saturday having this conversation. Because when I see examples like this, right, where you have someone say, disrespectful employees that undermine your authority. Well, when you hired them, let me ask you, when you hired them, were they respectful? Did you give them, when you were interviewing them, did you give them opportunities to prove that they were respectful? Or did you just want a body, right? And you're in this dichotomy where we need a lot more groomers. We're in a groomer drought. We need more groomers. And the majority of us don't have time to, to teach groomers, right? So you've got to make your decisions. It's, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, I'm going to hire this person. Yeah, they're not perfect, but they're a body. And then be upset later when you're trying to manage them. And there's no hope to do that because you've just hired somebody who has all the power and you set them up for a failure because you don't actually have clear expectations for them. And their pay is based on straight commission. So if they groom a lot today and then don't come in tomorrow, there's really no repercussions. And even if they don't come in, right, what are you going to do? Fire them? So as an industry, we need to change. Everything's got to change. The question is, how do you guys want to change? So this quarter, we are doing pricing and points, which is going to teach you guys more about how to use the point system. You know, it's the savvy groomer backbone of everything we teach. We are, we're calling it our GPS, the groomer point system. And it's going to help you organize how to, pay, you know, price your grooms, how to pay your employees, how to design and actually tell if someone is meeting your expectations as a manager or not, right? And remember, if you are a manager in a salon, if you're a groomer who's a manier, manager, right? If you're, you're a manager, then you should not be grooming full-time. Ideally, you wouldn't be grooming at all. 
when you take a situation, right? When you have a groomer who's not doing what they need to do, you need to be able to say, you know what? You got to go home. I'm going to finish your dogs. You go home. I'm going to write you up. This is what's going on, right? We need to shift that. Or if someone is not catching on as fast as we need, you need to be able to step and come alongside of them and say, hey, I get, I see you're not doing this. Um, and again, if you've hired appropriately, you've done the, the work when you hired them, you know, what is their love language? How do they feel appreciated and cared for and nurtured? And we need to nurture these employees, right? I, I see so much that you guys are just, you know, burn and turn, you know, you're burning them out and you're pumping them out and then they just get thrown to another boss. How are you going to nurture them? And remember, people come with problems. Most of these people that are coming to you that are groomers, when they left their last boss, it's not because they loved their last boss. It's probably because their last boss was either burning them out physically, emotionally abusive, right? Or something happened. Most of them, it's not like, oh man, I love my boss. I just needed a new place. Like that doesn't happen. It's like when someone leaves a relationship, they need to heal from that. And so we need to use things like operative and classic conditioning and start paying attention to where they're sensitive and connect and manage and grow those people. And some of you guys are like, well, I don't have time for that. Well, guess what? That's your job if you're managing a team. Your job is to support them. They, you can't have it both ways. You can't say to me that my employee is just a cog in a wheel and they just have to plug in and do their job and they're not a person and then expect them to care. You can't treat people like they are nothing and they're just a widget and then expect them to care in the same way. It has to be a two-way street. And if you are the manager, then you are the boss and you are the leader. And that's a totally different skill set. It's a totally different skill set, guys. It's not easy. It's not. Listen, I get it. It sucks sometimes. And as an industry, you have employees sitting here saying, we are burnt out. We are working ourselves to death. We're making no money. And our bosses expect too much. And then we have employers saying they're entitled and they're awful and they're taking all of my money. I agree. That's why on Monday, we're going to have a live chat about why 50% doesn't work. Okay. We're going to have a nice conversation, guys, about why 50% doesn't work. And honestly, commission in the industry has to stop. We've got to switch to hourly plus production bonus. But how do you, right? How do you scale that? How do you figure that out? Well, that's where in the pay masterclass, we discuss how to do things like using the point system, right? To tell how much these people are doing, how to actually calculate that, right? Because again, if I'm using this point system, and I expect this groomer to do between 10 and 12 points a day, right? And I book them 10 or 12 points a day and they're not meeting that goal within eight hours, right? I sit them down as their manager and I say, hey, I noticed that you're not reaching your goal. You're slowing down. You're needing extra support. Is something going on? Are you physically okay? Do you need to take a day out? Like what's going on? And they might be like, you know what? I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, I'm going through a bad divorce. And you're like, you know what? What I can do is I can demote you to a lower tier, still a groomer, but a lower tier that's a lower hourly wage while you work this out, you know, and you have less physical stress and less that you still have a pay. And if they go, no, 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 I really need the money, et cetera. Then guess what? Then you have the option to give them what's called a PIP or a PIP, which is a performance plan. It's okay. I'm putting you on probation, Right. Or you can say, you know, I totally get it. I can't imagine what that's like. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna let this slide for the next 60 days. But in the next 60 days, I really need to see an improvement. You can figure that out. You can manage and coach them and work with them. Um, it, and if you, as long as you hired the right people. But again, a lot of you guys are just hiring bodies, right? And then you're like, oh man, I hired this really terrible groomer. Okay, well... When you hired them, were they really good groomers? And if they were, why were they good? 
What was so good about them? Was it that they were hopeful that this place was going to be different and you were going to be different? You were going to be a quote unquote good boss because the last boss was insert reason. And then it they realized it was all the same stuff. It, there's a lot there. There's so much there, guys. And as an industry, everything's got to change. And I know that's, oh, that's easy for me to say, but I get it. We have to pay people a livable wage, an hourly wage plus production bonus. We need to, we need to figure out how to actually tell if they're meeting or exceeding what we expect of them, right? And if they're doing things that are against our SOP manual, that are against policies and procedures, we need to be there as a non-grooming manager in order to step in and say, hey, this is against policy. You know, again, point to your, pol your SOP manual and say, see this policy or your employee handbook, depending upon where it is. Hey, here's this. Here is the consequence. You know, I'm going to, it's a write-up. It's you know, being sent home early, whatever it is, right? We need to do that. We need the time and the energy to actually start hiring and treating people legitimately like employees, not just like a whole bunch of people running around. So I think that there's just so much going on in a post like this. And I've been obviously rambling on for 22 minutes, but again, where are the DC employees that actually want to work? Whenever someone says that, I want you to ask yourself, where are the decent bosses, right? Who are willing to grow the employees? Where are the decent bosses who are willing to treat you with kindness and compassion and not like a widget, not like a cog in the wheel? And it has to be fair for both. Shop owners, salon owners, mobile owners, you need to raise your prices so you can pay 30% or less payroll so you can slow down and focus and grow your, your business and focus and grow your employees. You got to do it. And again, I know it's easier said than done, but like I said, using the Savvy Groomer, Groomer Point System, aka the GPS system, I think that really is the backbone for a lot of these things. Uh, Mindy says, you're a genius. Thank you. And Amanda says, I agree. You know, that's what's, that's what's going on, guys. Whenever you see these posts of where are all the good workers, define a good worker. What is a good worker for you? Because someone I like to work with is going to be different than you, right? I'm a thinking type. I'm not a feeling type. I'm a technician. I'm not an artist, right? I have very different wants and needs in my grooming business than somebody who's an artist and a feeling type will, right? Me as a manager, as my cat's got his, excuse you, could you just lay down? He wants lap time. Lay down. You know, everyone is different. You are a different manager, right? You have different ideals. You have different everything, you know, and really knowing who you are as a leader. If, you know, if you are not a particularly good leader, it will show. It will show your employees. Uh, and you've got to be really careful. Like, all right, really quickly. And then I'll just go because it is like 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday. Um, with one of my employees, I had an issue where I had set something in place where every week we were going to have a to-do list. Every Monday we sat down, we did the to-do list. And, um, you know, we sat down every week and we did this and, I, and we kind of let it lax for last month because things were just really busy and it was hard to sit down and, and do this. And because we didn't do that, we ended up not having done what I expected to be done. There was a minor communication error that ended up being a huge communication error. I was asking, is this done? And she said, almost. And I thought it was six things as in the entire um, thing, the entire thing was done all six things. And then, you know, um, there was one, she had just finished one and I expected to have six things done. And I was like, Oh, she was like, yes, it's almost done. And she meant one and I meant six and it is what it is. 
right? And it really sucked because I was like, oh my God, like we're really behind now getting all of these things double checked. And, but ultimately as the leader, it's my responsibility. It's my fault, right? It's hundred percent my fault. I have to take ownership because whenever an employee <laughs> it's Saturday night and I'm thinking about grooming my dog. Listen, that is like, that's, that's the hard decision, man. Should I do my, own? and now my cat just like, listen, I'm excited to sit on the couch with my cat and then we're probably going to go to bed. I was like, I'll go out. I'm like, eh, or I'll just hang out. I'll go through Facebook and get inspired. And you can see I'm like, I'm cleaning out my office the last two days. It is what it is. Uh, Amanda said, and different personalities can clash and work well. So here's the thing. Personalities can work well, but different values do not work well. So, and it just depends upon when we say different personalities. Sometimes we say someone has two very different personalities, but they're actually incredibly similar. Um, you know, again, if you have one person who's introverted and extroverted, right? They can actually be incredibly similar um, because we think extroverted means that people are loud and they seek people out, right? It's just all extroversion means is that you actually gain energy from talking to people and introversion, you could have a loud, boisterous introvert, right? Because they lose energy from people. But you could have two people that really enjoy talking and they're both like energetic, right? But one person gets really run down from it and therefore their grooming slows down, right? Even though they work really well together. <laughs> is this what it's come down to? Yes. Yes, this is uh, this is what it's come down to. It's all good. It's, uh, it's, it's Saturday night. We're all just hanging out, talking about grooming shit. What else is new? But yeah, I mean, this, this is it. When it comes to the grooming industry, I mean, it's the way that we are seeking experienced groomer apply. It's like, okay, well, what is experienced groomer? What do you expect me to do? What are you going to pay me? What are the benefits? Why should I want to work for you? Right. Or, you know, everyone wants an experienced groomer, but they don't want to invest in growing someone. Right. So there's only two ways to get a groomer. Right. You can either build or you can bribe. Those are your two options. Are you going to bribe someone enough that they're going to leave their current situation um, or are you going to build your own? And pros and cons to both. But I think that's, again, where everyone's like, where are the good groomers? I want to bribe an experienced groomer to come work for me. Um, but we need to understand why they left their last groomer, their last grooming and business owner. Was it they weren't being paid enough? Was it not consistent? Were they not being challenged? Where um, was it a bad fit? Right. I see one of the biggest problems I see is the artist versus technician issue. Like I'm a technician. I don't have any interest in learning breed standard patterns. I don't have any interest in growing my grooming skills. I want to go into work, groom my dogs, groom my cats and go home. I don't have any interest in getting better at hand scissoring or anything like that. And it's weird that like, again, whenever I have an artist and they're like, well, why don't you, don't you get, don't you get energy from it? I'm like, no, actually learning more techniques takes energy from me. It actually exhausts me. Right. Um, it, it doesn't inspire me. The money and the sense of accomplishment, right. Does that. And again, it's, it's, there's so many things. It's also, what is someone's love language? You know, uh, you could have people with different personalities, but if they're all words of affirmation and they're all just gushing to each other, you get a people really like each other because they're constantly being fed. Um, if you have people that have really shitty home lives and they come in and they need their six human needs taken care of. And every time they come to work, you know, they're feeling important. They're feeling, you know, emotional connection right? They're feeling all of these things from work, right? They're having this entire, right? 
there's so many reasons, right? Again, they're getting their certainty. They're getting their, sorry, so they're getting their certainty, their variety, their significance, their connection, their growth, and their contribution. If they're getting all six needs from that job, they're more likely to stay. Uh, Amanda's saying, I'm the same way, not interested in breed cuts, and it's not what people want in my area, right? So, and this is important. If you are a technician and you are a technician shop or technician mobile and you hire someone who's an artist, they're going to be unhappy, right? If I, if I have a shop where I have, where I am an artist and I constantly am trying to get people to leave their dogs longer and I'm constantly trying to get people to try new things, right? And they're trying to do all of these things. Um, a lot of times, unfortunately, What's going to happen there is you're going to have a situation where they're going to be unhappy and they're going to leave 1000%. So, you know, if you guys are interested, we will be doing, um, hang on, actually, I can pull that up for you guys. So we're going to be doing the pay master class this quarter in the savvy groomer. So we're going to be doing all about how to be able to pay groomers legally. Because again, after taking this class, we taught this class um, earlier this year with um, with Jim Atchison, who's an attorney, and he really helped us get it together. Because I don't know if you guys know this, you cannot pay groomers salary federally. You cannot do a manual labor position salary. Um, and if you do commission, it has to be at least 1.5 times minimum wage. And for some of you guys, it's not a big deal because you're at seven bucks an hour and they're definitely going to make more than about $15 an hour or so. But a lot of us who are, our minimum wages are 15, right? And you're, they have to clock in. And when they're doing, you know, 40, 50 hours and you average all that out, it's, there's just so much there that we're not doing legally as an, as an industry. And then, you know, again, if the average, sorry, someone's cuddling me. Excuse you. Okay. Um, sorry, I lost my train thought I was holding my cat. It's all right. We're all good. It's like 10 o'clock anyway, but yeah. It just comes down to if 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 an apartment's two thousand dollars a month and they have to earn three to four times that apartment to get on the lease, that means they need to make six to eight thousand dollars a month, and that needs to be at a less than thirty percent of your weight of your gross. So it gets complicated, guys, and it is. It's like figuring out what that number is. How do we get there? How do we then make sure that they're actually working hard? They need to understand what they're actually agreeing to, right? Um, we are going to be teaching the Savvy Groomer point system. We're going to be teaching that on the 11th and April in group mentoring. We've updated it. We've made it a little bit more in depth. We've added a bunch of new things. I'm really excited about it. It's my favorite way of building the backbone of your business. It makes scheduling a lot easier. It makes managing employees a lot easier. It makes pricing a lot easier. It's probably the best thing that I've ever created. And, you know, we've been using it for a long time. We had to use it in my shop because again, we wanted team bonuses. We wanted everyone to be able to track their things. And we did a membership. So having a membership at the time, you know, people would pay a flat fee for their bath and blow dries. So figuring out, okay, how do I, how do I make sure this person is still producing, right? While we have this income in there. And so this is the system we've been using uh, probably for 15 years now. And it's been working really, really well. And my students that have learned it and really applied it, again, you can apply it to your pricing which then makes it really easy to schedule, which makes it really fair. Those of you guys doing a lot of labradoodles and doodles in general, you know, I say doodles should start at $200, even the little one. And the reason why is because if, and again, I know not everyone's at this price point, but if your Shih Tzu, which is a two point dog, 
one point for the bath, blow dry, nails, ears, all the prep work, and one point for the haircut. If that dog's is about a hundred bucks, right? It's at least two Shih Tzu's worth of effort to do even a cockapoo size dog. I promise you, if I said, if you had two Shih Tzu's and I had one, you know, let's call it a mini dude or a cockapoo. Most of you guys, if you hate Shih Tzu's, Yorkies, Maltese, insert small breed of dog. That's compliant, right? So most of you guys, if you had two Shih Tzu's and I had one cockapoo, one mini dude, right? And I said to you, hey, we're making the same exact amount of money, remember? I said to you, hey, I'll groom your two Shih Tzu's for this one cockapoo. You might do it for two. You wouldn't trade one for one, right? And that's a really quick way where you can go, okay, so these points, if these two Shih Tzu's are four points, you know, two and two, then that means that mini dude or that cockapoo is four really quickly. And that's why we're burning our staff out. Is your staff lazy or are you just burning them out? Because again, you're not using some quantifiable thing. You know, if I'm grooming five cockapoos, five mini doodles, right? You're like, that's not a lot of dogs, right? Versus five Shih Tzus. So five Shih Tzus is 10 points. Five mini dudes or five cockapoos, if we did the same math, is 20 points. No wonder that employee doesn't want to work, right? I mean, that's the truth, right? So it's important that we have some sort of way to tangibly calculate what's fair. And that's where I really believe the point system is the way to go. So I just wanted to do this because when I saw this post, I don't think the person realizes what they're saying. And I think it's because the industry has changed so much. Um, and I do think that if you ask a lot of the older groomers, they're going to tell you like, shut up and work. Doesn't work anymore. People aren't going to do that. You know why? Because if I can get 15 to $20 an hour to work at Chick-fil-A, you're not going to pay me $20 an hour to groom a dog um, to shut up and work. It's not going to happen. Right? It's just not going to happen. I need to be passionate about what I do. I need to feel like I'm a part of a team. I need to feel like what I do matters. And that starts with paying them a livable wage and learning how to pay them and learning how to calculate what a fair wage is, not just because they make a livable wage, but also quantifiably, this is how much work I'm asking you to do. And this is the pay I'm offering for that amount of work. Okay. And then from there, you know, like I said, we taught and manage. We taught you all about, you know, who are you as a leader? What's going on in your past, right? We all have emotional triggers. You know, what's triggering in your employee? You know, do they have learned helplessness? Are they expecting you to scream at them so they're shutting down? Are they neurodivergent, right? Are you setting them up to fail? Are you training them, not just teaching them, but also saying, hey, I notice this person is a keen aesthetic learner. I'm going to have them do it a hundred times in a row. Or, hey, this person learns by reading and writing. I'm going to have them write down a couple of times the steps, right? Or I'm going to leave written instructions next to the tub. You know, we need to do that as a industry. We need to raise up our standards. All right, guys. So it's 10.05 on a Saturday. Um, I wish I was like cool and like out, but I'm not. I'm here with you guys. So I hope this was helpful. Another river rant. Um, like I said, on Monday, we're going to be live and we're going to be talking again about why 50% isn't working. Um, we're going to go more in depth about that. We're going to be teaching the pay masterclass live in the Savvy Group membership in May. And in April, we're going to be teaching live pricing and points in the Savvy Group membership. Oh, thank you, Sophia. She said you're amazing. I appreciate you. You know, it's my biggest thing is just being here for the industry. You know, my goal is hopefully in a few years, we will be at a place where this will be like, well, duh. You know, we'll, we'll get there. It just takes time and it just takes people 
knowing what's going on and sharing and wanting to be a part of the change or at least not accepting to work for anyone who's not a part of the change um, and sharing the change. We'll get there. I believe in us. I don't know if you saw Sophia. My cat looks haggard. He, I've got to do my face trim on him. And he is such a little shit for a face trim. Oh my God. He like literally tries to like snap at the scissors. I'm like, you are going to poke your eye out. Um, I'm going to pluck his cheeks too. I'm just being lazy. Let's be honest. My cat looks like shit. What are you going to do? It's funny. We I know. Listen, I'm like, man, it's one thing if like dog groomers look at my shitty looking cat. It's a <laughs> cat groom like, I'm like, oh man, he is so bad looking right now. He's fine. He's cute. He's cute. Yeah, my Aussie looks homeless. I listen. I think it's just that time of year. It's just cold enough that you don't want to do anything. I have no excuse. I have no excuse. He's just, he's clean. He just needs, he just needs shaping. I know. What are you going to do? He's cute though. That's all that matters. All right, guys. Enjoy your Saturday. If those of you guys that are in at Intergroom, have so much fun. Enjoy it. Be a part of it. Uh, Sophia says, my poodle still look okay because of competition. You, you know what? That's when you have to bait them, right? Although I feel like my poodle looks like shit no matter what I do. Like everyone's like, why is she on camera? I'm like, because she's a dog. And like the last thing I want is like, yeah, honestly. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like I'm, I don't want anyone to be mean girled about my freaking dog. My cat, most people don't know if my cat looks like crap, but like dog groomers, man, that and my mom practicing her shaving. The poodle is going to be naked. I'll take a picture of that. She'll be all sport mode and like bald. All right, guys. Have a great Saturday. Love you all.